Let me start congratulating Israel for, for joining the OECD survey of adult skills. It's giving you an accurate picture of Israel's talent pool, but also of the opportunities adults in Israel have to, to use their skills effectively. You know, skills are the currency of 21st century economies. The skills help us navigate life's complexities and to take smart decisions. I know as technologies such as artificial intelligence evolve, some people question whether human skills will retain their value or gradually become obsolete. But, you know, the reality is much more nuanced. AI is likely to complement, not substitute, human intelligence. And it's going to change the nature of work and the skills that are needed. Israel is among 31 countries that took part in this survey. And Israel also took part in our first survey of adult skills. So we now have a decade's worth of data showing how skills in Israel have evolved. And this allows you to compare your population skills with those of other nations to attract changes over time and to identify areas that need improvement. When you look at the results overall, a few countries stand out in skills performance. Finland, Japan, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden. These countries excel in all three areas, in literacy, in numeracy, and problem solving. And these countries outperform most other countries. And this means that, for example, a higher proportion of their populations can, can understand and evaluate complex texts. They can grasp complex or hidden meanings, and they can use existing knowledge to understand and complete tasks. Overall, adults in Israel show literacy, numeracy, and problem-solving skills that are lower than on average across countries. And what is particularly concerning is that 36% of adults in Israel, and that's more than one-third, only show the literacy skills that you would expect from a, from a 10-year-old child at level one. They can understand short texts and can find specific information, but they have difficulties establishing meaning, follow more complex arguments. To some extent, that has to do with low skills among older adults. Like in most countries, younger adults in Israel do better than older adults in all three areas, no? which just highlights the importance of improving, of upskilling and reskilling, no? so that all adults get a chance to contribute to, to economic and, and social life. No? And last but not least, you know, average skills in Israel went down compared to 2012, and in, in, in both literacy and numeracy. It's a trend that we've also seen in, in many other countries, but the performance decline was actually quite large in Israel. And we saw it particularly pronounced among low-performing adults. In both numeracy and literacy, the, the share of low-performing adults grew and the share of high-performing adults shrank. In fact, in 28 out of the 31 countries and economies that we surveyed, the literacy skills of young adults either dropped or they remained static. Literacy skills of young adults only improved in England, in Finland, in Norway. And that's significant not just for economic participation, but also for democratic participation and informed political engagement particularly given the rise of, of misinformation, of fake news, and fabricated AI content in our societies. So why is all of that happening? There are lots of possible reasons. Now, for example, changing business models and employment relations, now, such as people working alone, now, online, that could result in people not maintaining or learning new skills in the workplace as much as they previously did. Changing reading behaviors at work and at home, no, as well as increased exposure to, you know, short texts on digital formats, social media, could have also have an impact. No. As more people enter higher education, the average skill level among graduates has also dropped. No. And this is really problematic, as it implies that tertiary degrees are no longer as strong an indicator of a person's skills as they used to be. The survey of adult skills also allows us to study how skills are related to educational attainment and, and, and gender. On average, across participating OECD countries and economies, 
women displayed higher average proficiency than, than men in literacy. You know? Three points, it's small, but it's, it's significant. While men scored higher in numeracy by 10 points and also in adaptive problem solving by three points. In Israel, a significant six points difference in favor of women was observed in literacy. A significant six point difference in favor of men was observed in numeracy and no real difference was observed in adaptive problem solving. No. A positive development is also that the socioeconomic gap ha is, has narrowed in, in Israel. No. So the skills distribution has become more, more equitable. As you would expect, you know, in all countries and economies, higher levels of educational attainment are associated with greater proficiency in literacy, in numeracy, in adaptive problem solving. Israel is no exception to that. But this pattern of higher proficiency for tertiary educated adults does not always hold across borders. No. In literacy, university educated adults in Israel, for example, score lower than adults with only an upper secondary school education in Finland. And the question for policymakers is how to improve credentialing systems so that they more accurately and consistently reflect a person's skills and knowledge. Systems should clearly show what people actually know and can do rather than just indicating you know, where they learned and how long they studied. And this would make it easier to compare qualifications and skills. It seems also that not all universities provide quality education to all students. Factors such as underfunding, uh, lack of qualified faculty, outdated teaching methods you know, can hinder the effectiveness of higher education. In such cases, you know, a university degree may not necessarily reflect a high level of skill or knowledge, you know, at least by international comparison. And for students, that means that the prestige of a degree should never be the sole factor in choosing an educational path. And in Israel, vocational education and training often provides a good alternative to university studies. It's really crucial to consider the, the quality of the institution and the skills it imparts. For employers, understanding those differences can help make more informed hiring decisions, now, focusing on the actual competencies of candidates rather than just the educational qualifications. Now. An important question is also, of course, how skills make a difference in people's lives. Now. And the general picture is that higher skills bring significant economic and social benefits. Now. Of course, you can say that adults with higher skills also tend to have you know, higher educational qualifications. That's true. But the benefits of higher skills extend above and beyond the opportunities associated merely with formal educational qualifications. Like in other OECD countries, adults in Israel who score at the highest levels of the proficiency scale have significantly better employment opportunities compared to adults who score at or below level one. It's not surprising. But importantly, differences in employment outcomes by skill level persist even when comparing adults with similar educational attainment. The survey also shows that skills are closely related to both individual well-being, we looked at what people say about their health and life satisfaction, but also at civic engagement. Now, here we looked at political efficacy, at trust, at volunteering. The bottom line is that many low-skilled adults feel disconnected from political processes and lack the skills to engage with, with, with complex digital information, which is a growing concern for modern democracies. In many countries, many workers are mismatched to their jobs, meaning that their qualifications, their skills, or their fields of study are quite different from what their current job would require. Mismatches can result from an inefficient allocation of workers to jobs. They can also reflect the fact that the workforce skills and qualifications are not keeping pace with structural changes in the economy, driven by, by digitalization, an aging population, and, and, the, and the green transition. And the mismatch is more pronounced in Israel than across OECD countries. 
In Israel, about 34% of workers are, are overqualified. No? The over it, OECD average for that is 23%. And a further 7% are underqualified. No? Here, the OECD average is 9%. And that means that their highest education qualification is above or below the level that is typically required for the current job. In OECD countries, adults who are overqualified for their job incur significant economic and social costs. But this is actually less the case in Israel. Now, on average, their wages are 14% lower than the, that of their peers in well-matched jobs who have similar educational attainment. So what can policymakers do to counteract the skills decline? Well, it requires a multifaceted approach to ensure learners are prepared for more rapid change than ever before. Now, to embrace lifelong learning even more decisively will be crucial. And policymakers should shift their focus from lifelong employment to lifelong employability. In today's rapidly evolving job market, individuals need to develop the skills and flexibility to adapt to changing industries, changing technologies, rather than relying on long-term job security with a single employer. And this shift necessitates lifelong learning and life-wide learning. Where individuals learn in different environments, in different situations, not just formal educational settings. Together with social partners, policymakers must review how modern workplaces allow adults to maintain and develop foundational skills. Developing adaptability is a key part of that strategy. Education and training providers must be more responsive to changing demands and ensure that the, the right skills are being acquired in, in the most effective ways. And that demands forward thinking and more flexibility and provision, giving learners greater ownership over what and how and when they learn. We also need to find ways to make education training more accessible. Now, countries can reduce barriers to, to lifelong learning by accommodating more diverse learning needs and schedules, such as offering modular part-time courses, evening classes, online learning options. Now, High initial costs often deter some potential learners. So financial support, such as you know, covering course fees, can sometimes help. No? And expanding entry points to recognize the skills individuals have acquired through non-formal and informal learning can sometimes smoothen the path towards formal learning opportunities. No? Improving the visibility and recognition of skills is also necessary. Now, with skills documented in a commonly accepted and understandable form. Strengthening skills that are valuable across different industries, such as critical thinking, problem solving, communication, is so important. And finally, governments need to build strong coalitions with the business sector to find sustainable solutions for funding the rapidly increasing demand for skills. That includes sharing the costs of adult learning between governments, enterprises, sometimes individuals, no? and involving businesses in decisions on where and when funding should be allocated. I know that many of those issues are actively discussed in Israel these days, and I have no doubt that current policy initiatives will be a, bear fruits in, in the years to come.